the gallery. I'd like to declare the meeting open. Federation Council wishes to advise members of the public that council meetings will be recorded and will be available after each meeting on council's website. All care will be taken to maintain the privacy of those in attendance. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the public gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event your image is broadcast. Council, ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to welcome uh, Uncle Freddie Dowling from the Bangarang Mob to uh, give the acknowledgement of country. Please, Thank Uncle Freddie. There he is. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, honoured to be here this morning to uh, do a welcome to country for you. And uh, my name is Freddie Dowling. Anyone who don't know me, I'm a descendant of the local Bangarang people from this area, and, and right through the Wangaratta and uh, all over anyway where the Bangarang country is. And uh, my grandmother's father is in the. Uh, Elk over, over there in my way, or just across the river. And um, so, on behalf of my ancestors, I welcome you all to here to uh, this area, and uh, this morning especially. And uh, I know you don't really need to be welcome because you all live here and love this place. <laughs> and so, it's, uh, oh, wow. this is a formality. Welcome to this area, to our country. Thank you very much. Now, I've got a couple of books here for you uh, to put in your library. And uh, they're all about this area and the animals that's in this area. And uh, no worries. Excellent. Thank you, Uncle Fred. We'll treasure that. And uh, thank you and, and the rest of the mob for being here for the last week. It's been a very enjoyable uh, week and exhibition. And uh, yeah, we always appreciate no worries, and respect. You. And if you if you have your wife, or if you've got a few minutes, I can uh, tell you a bit of history around uh, that you probably need to know as councillors, and because uh, if people ask you a bit of a question, you know what to answer. Yeah, if, if you want it, and then, uh, we can do it on the whiteboard out there if you want it or whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And would you like to do that? We're having um, a break at 10:30 um, for morning tea with you. Yeah. Would you like to do it at that time, or would you like? Would you want to? Yeah, we'll do it too. I'm a little bit deaf here, so I'll probably. Yeah. So I'll break at the morning tea break at half past ten. Well, right, yeah, we're, we're, we're having a morning tea for you at 10.30, so we'll do it. Is that it? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now call for apologies. I don't think there'll be any. Uh, a notification of pecuniary and conflict of interest in business items. Uh, there is one listed there. Uh, could, would someone like to move to note that? One moved by Council Neagle, seconded by Council Thomas. All in favour? Uh, against carried. Uh, confirmation of minutes. The last meeting, would someone like to confirm those minutes, please? Two meetings. Uh, two meetings, sorry. Uh, moved by Council Longley and seconded by Council Law. <coughs> All in favour? Aye. Uh, against carried. Uh, okay, so the mayoral minute is uh, the open report there. Yeah, okay, we'll, um, yeah, we'll bring that into the Merrill the library funding campaign, I'm sorry. Uh, would you like to make a comment on that, Mr General Manager? Yeah, it's certainly just highlighted through um, Councillor Thomas, particularly um, we attended the 40th anniversary of the Riverina, should stand up, the Riverina Regional Library Service, which is a fantastic library service, operates um, based out of Wagga, but it covers uh, many, many councils, so Councillor Thomas and I attended on, on Friday the uh, 40th birthday celebrations for that uh, service and it sort of highlighted I guess um, the funding constraints that are facing New South Wales Library so there is a campaign from the New South Wales Public Library to um, work towards promotion of ensuring or trying to um, enable that the libraries get a more fair share of funding so over time that uh, state governments of both um, parties of both sides have um, decreased the amount of funding that they do send out to the um, 
library. So uh, Councillor Thomas may want to add um, comment or two on that one, and we just want to note that if the mayor would agree, if the, if the mayor will minute that we do endorse that campaign. Absolutely, uh, So there's going to be a campaign launched at the end of this month, and it's called the New Our Library. And they're really encouraging local councils to New South Wales local government to move a motion. Can I read the motion Absolutely. out? Uh, so our motion would read a Federation Council funding for public libraries. That local government New South Wales and member councils lobby the New South Wales government to increase annual percentage of funding for public libraries. Very good. And uh, again, I'd like to move that council, Thomas. Yes, we'll yes. 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 do it that this morning. Just get that word, sorry. Yes.
aerial um, imagery, imagery, of course, which we um, have um, fairly, uh, fairly up to date, um, and to explore um, topographical uh, information. Um, and there are a number of search, and, um, search functions available um, in there. We're also working on um, some additional functionality, uh, such as um, importing all of our sedimentary uh, information. So, you know, that's an example of a common inquiry that we have um, to our customer service staff. People are searching for um, sort of friends or, or relatives, and so um, we'll be able to um, pop on to the, the mapping system um, and into the surname and, um, and, and show you where, where they are located in the cemetery. So uh, we're really excited about this. Uh, and uh, we're proposing to um, invite um, Chad Powell, our, our training and GIS officer, to attend um, the workshop this afternoon to give council uh, just a brief sort of overview of, uh, of what that looks like. So we have a plan uh, in place to uh, promote this new service <laughs> uh, and, um, and also to provide some uh, demos and information to them to the public. Uh, I think it's going to be a great, um, a great service also to um, you know, emergency um, and different, um, yeah, yeah, different groups. So that's the council's, um, well, recommended that um, council, yeah, not to make that report. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Moved by Council Law. Seconded by Councillor uh, Kennedy. Any questions or comments on that, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Mm -hmm. Against? Carried. Thank you. And uh, the final report for me today relates to Section 355 to So further to the report provided um, at the June meeting, I am now uh, looking for uh, delegates, um, councillor delegates, to uh, each of our Section 355 committees. Um, and as council is aware, we are um, currently uh, um, consulting um, in relation to a draft um, policy, Section 355 policy and manual. Uh, and um, so staff um, together with hopefully councillors will work with um, these committees to support uh, uh, the great um, you know, activities um, that, that they do um, and certainly to, to help in terms of the, the launch of, of that manual. Uh, so I've listed uh, the, the current committee uh, and I'm hoping that uh, today we can have um, some nominations that Councillor Delegates to the committee. Can I run through that? Councillor Mangles. Thank you to Ms. Kate on the Note that a former committee under the former Coral Shire, the Community Health and Social Support Committee, isn't listed there. Uh, whether, and I apologise, I wasn't here for the June meeting, and whether that was just an oversight or there was a reason that that committee was not included. Yeah, no, uh, no reason. I think we had an understanding that was no longer active. So, okay. uh, yeah, which is obviously, um, you know, this is the body of work that uh, we need to do with the council is to, to review um, the functions of all of the committees. Um, and uh, I think there are some, you know, there are some other committees uh, there that um, we currently haven't adopted them as a section 355 committee previously. The committees might, for example, the Aerodrome News Group Committee. Um, Clarification around whether they really are a section 355 or a user group advisory committee. So, um, so we can happy to include that. So we can no, that's okay. That. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I'm guessing there'll be opportunity along the way if um, committees do decide to come under the 355 yeah. committee banner. So that that will be absolutely. Yeah. It's all part of the review process, which we're just embarking on. So yeah, thank you. Uh, so the Forest Creek Community Facilities Committee. Uh, councillors did. The I'll, I'll, have, I'll go and support them. Hey, excellent. That'd be great. And, and, and I'm happy to, um, you know, go in as an alternate. What's your patch, Never. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Good to, uh, good to get out there. I'm sorry, Councillor Kennedy, did you want to? <laughs> okay, we've got. Um, Before, just um, so the manual doesn't just to clarify. There is any the expectation that the council would attend all of all of the meetings. Not all of these committees meet on a monthly basis as, as well. Um, there is an expectation in, a, in the manual that we would at least attend the, the AGM. But obviously, as we're um, we're reviewing um, and trying to initiate that sort of initial support for the committees, there will be a bit more intensive work um, in the initial period, um, and then things you know hopefully should settle and. Um, Every meeting and staff obviously are there to support the process as well. 
So just to, I guess, clarify the amount of, sort of work involved in, in these um, delegates. Well, and the second one, Columbo Creek. Yeah, I'm happy to um, be involved there. Uh, if there's an alternative available, we'll certainly take it. Uh, Councillor Longley, thank you. Uh, Community Safety Committee and Corolla Drug Action Team. Yeah, I'm happy to be on that. Great, thank you. Uh, and look, I guess alternatives are optional. If, you, if someone wanted to nominate for alternatives, just jump in. If you need one, I'll do it. Coral Festival of Dance. Oh, well, that's my baby. <laughs> 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 Excellent, Councillor White Church. Do we have an alternative? Councillor Kendi. Uh, yeah, I'll just say that I'm happy to be involved in the Coral Festival of Dance. Um, and there's a number of other things that we can do as well. Uh, but I'm happy to be involved in the Coral Festival of Dance. Thank you. Uh,
the Federation up in Korowa. Thank you. Fantastic. Greatly appreciated. Uh, yes. Um, any questions or comments, discussion? Yeah, just, be just one question and then to you, Ms Kay. Those committees obviously don't meet on monthly or regularly, some of them. Is it possible to get a contact now that we've all made an alternate or a, a, as a delegate of the contact email address for that committee so that obviously the council will let them know, but so that we can then get feedback on when their meetings are so they don't just drop us on it on the, the Monday for Tuesday or something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have a list of all the contacts which we provide and part of what we're working through uh, with our mandatory process is to you know, make sure all committees have got a terms of reference so that um, you know, there's a clear, I guess also one of that would be a guide around who the meetings are and the process for that so there's, you know, everyone's got an understanding that. But we'll say that, definitely. Well, also, obviously, advise the committees of the, the Council of Delegates um, and, and the principal mm -hmm. staff mm -hmm. delegates to follow me. Uh, so solution? Yes, um, we've got a move in Council Lauren, and second in Council Thomas. Thomas. All in favour? Uh, okay. Against carried. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Very good. Now we'll move on to Director of Finance and Organisation Development Report, please. Thank you, yes. Mr Mayor. Um, the first report, Information Report 7.1, Statement of Bank Balances and Reconciliation at the end of June. So yeah. moved by Council on Legal, second by Council on Law. Any questions or comments? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against Harry. Uh, second report: Schedule of investments as of 30th of June 2018. Um, just one thing um, worth noting there is our investments were a bit higher for the end of June because we got the first payment of the revenue sharing grant. Early. Excellent. We're going to move it. Moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Nagel. Uh, any questions or comments? I'll put it all in favour. Uh, against carry. Uh, Seven point three uh, <coughs> councillors. Um, it includes uh, um, a review of the economic development um, uh, status at this present. Uh, up, uh, update of that. The uh, report that the CSU presented to uh, uh, together with regional development um, to councillors uh, a number of months ago that's now been finalised in the document form, so you'll find that in the attachments. Uh, you also find in the attachments the, um, the that was under the uh, Enterprise uh, Energise Fund. You also find a, um, a report to do with uh, the Energise Enterprise Fund to do with small communities. Now that document is a, basically a draft document that I would envisage going out to all the smaller communities for for them to pick up and um, for community development side of the council to uh, to basically allow them to um, look at the document, pick out what they believe is is right, comment on what they think isn't relevant to them, and hopefully those town improvement committees in particular um, to to go forward with them. Um, uh, and and so on <coughs> feed into the community. Um, so we don't say that everything in them is, is correct, uh, but a lot of the information that came out of it would have fed into the budget uh, side of things, particularly uh, things like, say, communities were concerned with signage. Well, signage was uh, an issue within the council's budget, uh, but other things uh, like uh, mobile black spots. Uh, that was a concern for, in particular for some um, communities and I'll also like uh, later um, if you haven't already seen it uh, a, um, an email press release from uh, Greg Applin, our local member to do with the, um, New South Wales funding in regards to that um, there is also there is also um, together with those uh, things in the case of the CSU study I've actually done a, um, an extra table, a one-page summary, uh, as to how that document we have incorporated into our economic um, development um, action plan and um, hopefully move forward on, on those uh, issues. So a lot of information.
information there. Another thing that's come out um, today um, in the emails passed on from the general manager is the local regional involvement um, um, strategy for the area. So there will be that document as well, and I envisage uh, working through that, producing a, a one-page summary uh, for councillors to look at as well, um, yeah, probably for the uh, maybe for the August meeting or certainly for the next e economic development um, uh, action plan update in another three months' time. Thank you. We have a move at Councillor um, Whitechurch, seconded by Councillor Thomas. Any questions, Councillor Longwell? No, no question, Mr. Mayor. Just in regard to support of the the report. I think uh, even though small in numbers, the small communities uh, in the rural areas have got big spirit. Um, those of us that are, are familiar uh, see whereby in different instances, say in examples at, uh, at Baldale, the local community there, they're very big in supporting them themselves in regard to uh, their recreation facility, even though they don't have a football club, um, the, the cricket club down to just the junior side, there's no tennis club, but they they have an opportunity with their, their centre there to have community functions and they actually um, once a year have a mid-winter opportunity where they, they promote it and they get entertainment. Uh, they put some crop in around the ground, um, all volunteer and they run cheap. Um, so there's one example. Days was another one with their hall. They've done tremendous work out there to support their facility there to keep uh, their hall going. They have 21st birthdays and all sorts of things. And so Rennie's got their community hall. It's such a, a real endowment of the spirit. And even though we've, uh, you know, as I say, the, the rural areas become sparse in population, I think it's a great result to, to encourage these little communities once they lose their pub and their, their shop and, and uh, their schools, but they're still there in spirit. And I reckon it's just fantastic that something like this has turned up and gives them a, a chance of hope. And we should, right across the board of all spectrums of level of government, should support them and see what we can do to make it so that it is the status quo that can even improve in the future. Thank you, Councillor Longmore. Councillor Legal. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, just in support of what Councillor Longmore said, I was really pleased with the document and the attention, especially to the small communities um, report. A lot of detail in there. They've done a lot of research, and it gives a starting point. I concur with what Mr. Parker said, that it's really just a starting point um, now to give that to the communities to see what they can do and where they can go with it. It's not um, the final report and say, here it is and this is what we're going to do, but rather to give some ownership to those communities. And some of the suggestions in there are worthy of merit and hopefully the communities themselves can take that on board and we can be the facilitators to help those communities go forward in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor Thomas. I just really wanted to endorse what my fellow councillors have said and I'm sure we all have the same sentiments in the room, but to give any community the ability to perhaps you build in their own right is, is a, a win-win So prime me off the back of that last report where you endorsed delegates to those town improvement committees, those smaller villages that have the Baldale and others, um, to make sure that they become the vehicle that you put that back to and say here's what you've told us and use those committees to really give them a focus. Yeah. Councillor Thomas. Uh, just in light of what our general manager has mentioned, so if you've got situations where you might have um, small community, so I'm thinking of the Savannah Hall, like they have a Savannah School of Arts committee, but they're actually not a section 355 of council, so how will you visit that you'll get that information to them? Uh, yes, well, the, um, the, the, that's, I'm still exploring how, how to get that out to the communities, but uh, um, when we've got email contacts, it's so easy to attach it and it goes wherever. And one of the things that, um, why, one of the reasons why I've kept the document as one document is that a lot of times um, one, one community can see what another community might have suggested and um, may not have looked at that themselves and so you, you get a, a, a cross-pollination and one of the things that could happen in the, the longer term to give them give the smaller communities a voice like you're talking about ones that um, 355 committees say is, is there's a possibility with this uh, document as a focus for for representatives to come from each of those smaller communities into a sort of reference group um, where you might actually then have a voice from that side of, of the community that we might not already have as a as a as a more um, general collective sort of um, 
approach so they don't feel like they're isolated and just because there's five people in that particular location they, they, they um, don't get their concerns um, re relayed through or along those lines. Excellent and it's a good point how we connect all these community committees like it's something that um, we need to embrace to, yeah, to give all that opportunity out there for sure. All right, uh, we've got to move the second. Uh, we'll, I'll put it here unless there's any further questions. Okay, all in favour? Uh, against? Carried. Uh, 7.4 councillors. Um, an update, a reason for this update to do with the uh, council resolving at the budget meeting to reinstate uh, receiving at Australia Post Offices and Agencies is that um, uh, Australia Post is has told us that uh, they won't be able to reinstate it until as of as the earliest being the 2nd of October. The finance manager is still trying to work on get, getting that um, reduced from that time. We, we can't understand why it will take long. Um, so it was just an update for councillors on that particular issue. And in the case of anyone that, um, that I was aware of that had um, made a, um, made a uh, submission to deal with this issue, to do with the budget process, some of them go back months. Um, we did actually, uh, I did actually write to each of those just to advise them that we're hoping to um, to um, uh, reinstate it. And I, at that time of writing, I was hoping that we would have it together very soon after the end of July. But um, but the advice uh, that Australia Post has given us is it won't be expected until the second, at least the second of October. So that's a an issue that we'll still work on. Hopefully, we'll have some good news um, at a, a future time. Would someone like to move that council moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch? Uh, any questions or comments, Councillors? Councillor Kennedy. Yeah, um, I reckon this is um, something. I know it's going to cost council money to reinstate it. We've all worked that out, but um, we've had. Um, I've had been contacted by a lot of elderly people, especially in Moala, because the council office only open part-time in Moala, and a lot of them go to the post office, do their banking, pay their bills at the same time, which um, it's very daunting on some of the, the elderly people who aren't computer and paying it online, and that. And um, I think this is a great option to get work forward. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, I'd just like to um, confirm what Councillor Kendi's saying, and the fact that when this came to light, I think uh, Councillor Longley was, was hammered over in how long and, and the different things. But our council staff, through um, our manager of finance, Shane Norman, and Mr. Parker, have produced a, a very detailed report to council back then that, that went right through the thorough costings and where it was going to go um, and what the additional costs were for council to have that facility. But I do think that as a council to pursue it and re implement it for the sake of those small areas that people that do have trouble going to the council area or, or limited options to pay, I think it's a, a good thing and it really does reflect that we are listening to what the people in those places are saying and the, the extra cost that council is bearing I think is a cost that's well rewarded by the, the people. So well Excellent. done. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Councillor Wales. Thank you, Matt. I'd just like to say, Mr. Mayor, this is a service to our community. Our community <coughs> is very important, so well done. Thank you, Councillor Wales. If there's anything further, Councillor, if not, I'll put it all in favour uh, right. against Kerry. Okay. Okay, thank you. And now we'll move on to the Director of Infrastructure and Environment. Thank you, Peter. Just thank you. Three years there. Um, report I want to get the standard building approvals, um, applying and construction certificates approved under delegation during the past month. Just for Council to know. Someone like to moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Law. Any questions or comments? All in favour? Against carry. Report 8.2 is again developed applications approved under delegation since the previous month. Uh, again, for council's information. I read by Councillor Nagel, seconded by Councillor Thomas. Question, Mr. Question, Councillor Nagel. Mr. Law, just a point of clarity the size of the solar farm at Tarangal, um, any idea on, on how big a facility that was, that was for? Uh, tow truck out the back. It takes up basically the land behind the industrial estate. They're trying to get a piece of land there. Okay. Um, I'm not sure of the exact area, but it's fairly substantial. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you know the um, energy size that they're promoting? No. Uh, okay. Well, I think. Okay. Any further, Council? So I'll put it all in favour. All right. Mm -hmm. Against. Carry. Thank <laughs> you. 
regard to the opportunity. The presenter recently at one of our uh, workshops uh, displayed the opportunity that I think one in seven dollars, have I got that right, uh, in regard to state government funding to overview and certainly do a planning opportunity through uh, further in our shire to what's already been done or will be done on the northern section of the shire. It's uh, quite irrelevant at the moment. We should be talking about flooding um, under the current weather conditions. However, the things will change and I believe that in the future um, we're all uh, neighbours, um, landowners and shire uh, council and if we work together in a process that's, that's been designed properly um, when it does rain again and when there is excess water like there was in 2010, 2016 um, we can go forward with confidence uh, to um, make sure we work together for the benefit of everybody in the community. Thank you Councillor Almighty. I've got a second to Councillor Thomas. And you comment. Thank you Councillor Thomas. Um, I actually rang my fellow council on my yesterday and I actually thanked him for pulling together this document mm. and pulling together this notice of motion because I just think it's so important for our community, especially those north of the Riverina Highway. As you will be aware, some of those communities have actually pulled together their own committees and have actually engaged private consultants to actually look at flood plain management. Now you've got to remember that those monies, consultants cost money, and those monies are actually coming out of those landholders' back pockets as we stand here today. So it'd be great if we could actually help them in some way. Thank you, Council and I'm very happy to thank this motion. Thank you, Council Thomas. Any, any further council? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Uh, against Kerry. Okay. Reports from the committee. Reports from the committee. So, correspondence. Um, councillors, I'll just run through. Lake Macquarie City Council, um, the Rinchone campaign. Uh, just if there's any questions, just raise your hand. Uh, Qantas, we've all seen the um, letter received back from Qantas that we weren't successful and we put the, um, the 10 councils forward. Uh, they're on the short list. Um, New South Wales, sorry, was there a question there? Yes, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Just on that Qantas report, I would personally just like to congratulate the council staff and the councillors for having a crack at that. It was a great opportunity. We didn't get over the line this time, but I believe the submission that we put forward gave us a, a, a realistic opportunity. Um, we, it was disappointing not to be listed in, in that final lot, but I hope that it's perhaps given a stimulus for going forward to really utilise that facility that um, is <coughs> so important to Council. I, absolutely good comment, Council Meadowland. I think it's, it's made us more aware of that business and, and what potential it is there to further development. So I think it was a great kickstart too. Uh, did any other councils like to comment on that? If not, I'll, I'll move on to the next item. Uh, the, the New South Wales Government, that's 12.3, the uh, Department of Premier and Cabinet. Um, they requesting consideration for Citizen uh, of the Year. And then Lonsdale, 12.4 Lonsdale Recreation Reserve Committee, forwarding a copy of their minutes. Uh, so there's these correspondence. Would someone like to move the correspondence? Uh, moved by Councillor Neagle, seconded by Councillor Longley. Uh, all in favour? Against? Carried. Okay. Would someone like to move that we suspend morning tea? Moved by Councillor Thomas, seconded by Councillor Long.